Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Madoli. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, I do a lot of work with the IRS on federal income tax policy. And uh, the lights are a little bit bright, but normally you can just see the interest in people's faces just drain away. And you can actually see people just walk away from you. Um, but uh, I'm, So I'm going to try to just, I guess, maybe uh, reinvigorate you a little bit to talk about tax policy. And uh, since I only have a couple minutes, I'm going to dive right into my story. So my story starts in the uh, 1980s and uh, early 1990s, I guess. So this is a time when friends were actual physical people uh, before a television show or things that you tap on your phone. So kind of a different environment. But uh, at that time, social policy or the social safety net was really uh, driven by a policy called, or a program called AFDC, the Assistance for Families with Dependent Children. That provided uh, kind of traditional welfare assistance, basically, so cash assistance to individuals uh, that, uh, that had uh, children. And uh, at that time, I think the image that people had in mind was uh, often uh, the image of welfare queens. So people staying at home, taking advantage of the system, and receiving uh, cash benefits. Now, around that uh, early, mid-1990s time, there was a revolution. And uh, this was not a revolution in uh, the sense of NBC TV's uh, Musty TV or like, you know, more episodes of Friends coming on or Seinfeld. Think uh, more Monica Lewinsky and less Monica Geller. So we had a Democratic uh, president kind of leading the charge to uh, reform welfare or reduce welfare in terms of uh, and moving us away from cash-based assistance uh, and moving toward temporary assistance and also expanding uh, federal tax credit that was uh, created under Richard Nixon. So it was a very, very strange time. But that basically put us on uh, the path of uh, making the earned income tax credit and the federal income tax code the largest anti-poverty tool uh, in our country. So uh, this made tax filing very sexy. The IRS became uh, pretty popular. If you don't believe me, uh, in 2006, uh, Hollywood even caught on. Will Ferrell, uh, Emma Thompson, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Queen Latifah, Tony Hale, movie called Stranger Than Fiction. I see a lot of folks uh, kind of staring blindly, but Will Ferrell plays an IRS agent. He audits Maggie Gyllenhaal. I don't want to give anything away, but it was, it was a great rom-com. Uh, so if you haven't seen it already, I definitely recommend it. But basically, tax filing became front and center for uh, thinking about social policy. And at that time, we also had a revolution in terms of thinking about behavioral economics and social policy. So we started to recognize that a lot of people that are potentially the most in need individuals are not getting uh, benefits that they are eligible for, potentially because of uh, cognitive biases or uh, other structural barriers that prevent them from getting those uh, benefits. We were able to put some numbers on this, I think, uh, in the early 2000s. So to give you a sense, the earned income tax credit, the budget or the expenditure is on the order of $70 billion per year. About 20% of the EITC is, uh, is, is unclaimed. So 80% take up, 20% incomplete take up. That's about on the order of $15 billion of incomplete take up or money left on the table. TANF, uh, the current form of cash assistance for welfare, uh, the budget is about $15 billion every year. So the amount of unclaimed tax refunds is about uh, comparable to our welfare programs currently. So imagine if you could just get people to file their tax returns, you could basically create an additional component of the social safety net. So this was basically the landscape that I think Code for America's tax team uh, and I were able to uh, kind of partner in. So we've been working with the IRS to basically uh, test strategies to increase tax filing. So making uh, tax filing more accessible so that more individuals who were not previously getting benefits uh, now can claim their earned income tax credit benefits, their child tax credit benefits, their withholdings, um, and then also economic impact payments. Uh, we partnered also with the Virginia Department of Social Services. So VDSS administers TANF, SNAP, uh, Medicaid, so welfare, food stamps, health assistance, or medical assistance. And we're able to identify their clients, so people that are very much in need of social assistance or public benefits, and then send those messages, clients, or referrals to Code for America's Get Your Refund and uh, Get CTC uh, uh, portals so that individuals could then file tax returns. And basically, this meant millions of additional dollars going back to uh, individuals in the state of Virginia. Going forward, we're hoping very much to partner with other state agencies, other local entities, and uh, hopefully get billions of dollars back uh, to, to more individuals that are in need. 
So thank you guys very much for the opportunity to speak to you. And uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I'll end on this. Uh, I want to say uh, we really appreciate all of the efforts of everybody here. And if you can, if you have the capacity, uh, do more if you can. Uh, I think this is really extremely valuable work. And uh, thank you guys again.